Hi there guys, welcome to Jonesy's question and answer vlog session. Uh, something I've been promising for a while now, but I've just had to put off basically for... I've just been so busy really, especially this week, I, I just haven't had the time to do it. But thank you for continuing to send your questions in and, uh, and for being so patient guys. So hopefully we can have a little bit of fun with this, so, uh, so we'll get straight into it. Um, first comment is from YouTube and JC Vlog HD, and he asked who my all-time favourite Leeds player is. Now, I mean, I started watching Leeds uh, the 1996-97 season, um, so it was that time where obviously George Graham uh, was in charge, um, and him and O'Leary had just started to sort of blood a lot of the the youngsters. It was quite a big time of, of uh, our youth academy and those players coming through and obviously then into the era of O'Leary who, who brought them all into the first team. So there were the likes of you know uh, Lee Boyer and, and Jonathan Woodgate, Alan Smith of course, uh, Harry Kuehl and I mean they were just really fantastic players to watch. I mean it was, it was a, almost a perfect time for me to start watching Leeds United really. Um, you know, I, I felt very blessed to to have seen some of the players that that I have seen play play for the club. Um, obviously, moving on then, were, you know, Matt Viduka who was just a fantastic striker to watch. You know, sometimes you know it, it didn't seem like he was doing much. You know, he was such a such a big uh, strong guy, but some of the goals that he scored and some of the skill that he had were just just fantastic, really. And and some of the memories that he created for us, obviously that that far three against Liverpool was just fantastic. Um, so obviously more recent years, likes of Max Gradle, Jermaine Bedford, players like that. But for me, my my all-time favourite player is the Chief Lucas Radderby. He he's just my my all-time hero from from watching Leeds United. He's, he's the player that I always looked up to. Um, whilst I was growing up and I was sort of starting to play football a bit at school and everything, and you know just he he put everything on the line. You know he was one of those players that always gave hundred and ten percent. You know, he, he never seemed to complain about anything, no theatrics to, to everything that he did. You know, he just wanted to go out there, he wanted to win every game, you know, give everything that he could uh, within the match. You know, defensively, he was just fantastic. You know, winning headers in, in the air, um, obviously winning headers in the air, he's not going to win heads on the floor, is he? Um, but, you know, the, the tackles that, that he put in, the commitment he put in, and obviously getting forward as well, you know, he, he did chip in with the odd goal and I mean that, that famous goal I think was it was it Sparta Moscow or Sparta Prague away? I can't quite remember, but that, that famous overhead kick that he scored was just well, it, it's just one of those things that, that sticks in your sticks in your memory as a Leeds fan. Um but yeah, for for me Lucas Radme, you know, the the guy that he is, you know, off off the field, clearly one of the nicest guys in football. Um, you know, one of those sort of one of the last players really that just wanted to play football because he he loved the game. You know, read his um, his biography, um, and you know the the amount that he sort of went through, the amount that he's, he's still sort of gone through off the pitch, uh, losing his wife, of course, um, and some of the stuff that happened back in South Africa. You know, it's quite a quite a hero story really from him and you know he's someone that I'd love to see back at the club one day either as a coach or as manager or something because he's he's just one of those proper legends of Leeds United so uh, so yeah for me um, Jesse Vlog Lucas Radme is uh, definitely my, my all time favourite Leeds United player so uh, thank you very much for your question there mate um, another one from YouTube this is from uh, Green Forest Gaming um, and his question is what is your all time favourite Leeds United goal I mean that it definitely a tough one because I mean I, I've again been lucky enough to see quite quite a few memorable memorable uh, Leeds United goals um, I think I'm just going to go for ones that were actually really spectacular I mean there's been a lot of memorable goals uh, you know, obviously Jermaine Beckford against Bristol Rovers you know it wasn't a spectacular goal but you know for, for what it meant and the celebrations afterwards um, so there's been quite a few like that but looking at spectacular goals you know as early as Sam Byram uh, you know this season that goal against Oxford for me was just absolutely out of this world I mean you know if Messi would have scored that goal for Barcelona in the Champions League or something I mean it would have been all over Sky Sports News but because it came against Oxford in, in the in the cup 
didn't really get the coverage it deserved. And yes, you know, it was against a lower league opposition, but you know, the skill that he showed there and, and the finish, it doesn't matter what, what opposition you're playing against, you know, that is a fantastic goal no matter who you score it against. So, you know, even, you know, as, as recently as that, but one that sticks out in my memory and one that I spent a lot of my uh, childhood growing up trying to replicate in my back garden and trying to replicate at school was Harry Kuehl's goal when we played Sheffield Wednesday away I think it will have been either 99 or going on into 2000 um, it was towards the end of the season I believe I think Sheffield Wednesday were either nearly relegated or almost relegated anyway um, and I think we won 3-0 I think David Hopkins scored after about 30 seconds or 40 seconds something like that but uh, yeah it, Harry Kuehl gathered the ball uh, I think it was a passing from the wing gathered the ball maybe 30 yards out 25-30 yards out turned on the ball and pretty much with his very next step just with the outside of his of his left boot just managed to curl it and kind of chip it over their keeper into the top left hand corner and I just remember sat there at home watching it with just with my with my mouth open like that watching oh my god you know obviously there's been there's been a lot said against Harry Kuehl you know for, for what he's done and obviously going to Galatasaray and you know he's definitely gone down in a lot of Leeds fan estimations but you look back at when he was at the club I mean he was so so skillful and I mean that injury that he got um I can't remember whether it was towards the end of his time with, with Leeds or going on to when he was at Liverpool, but you know that Achilles injury got really sort of ruined his career really. But before that, I mean, he had the pace, he took defenders on, you know, he scored goals for fun pretty much and they were all you know, he didn't really do tap ins to be honest. But yeah, that, that goal against Sheffield Wednesday is probably my all time favourite Leeds United goal amongst many but you know the, the skill you don't see many um, with the outside of the foot like that um, but with you know so much precision behind it you know he, he knew exactly what he was doing there and left the keeper with absolutely no chance and I think that it gave it more of effect sort of coming in off the bar um, so yeah if Leeds United fans if, if you haven't seen that you know maybe a lot of the younger fans might not have seen that go try and check that out on YouTube somewhere I'm sure it'll be somewhere on the internet because uh, it really was quite a special goal so uh, Yep, Green Forest game, and again, thank you for your question there. So, yep, Harry Kuehl again, Sheffield Wednesday um, in 99-2000 is my um, all-time favourite Leeds United goal. Uh, going on to, uh, this is quite a long question, but a really, really good question here from uh, Craig and Natalia. I think that's how you pronounce it from YouTube. Um, he says, all the people will remember the glory days. Uh, some will remember the League Championship of 1992 and others will remember the Champions League and UEFA Cup runs under O'Leary. What is going to attract the next generation of Leeds fans? Now that's the thing, that's a fantastic question there, uh, Craig. Um yes, you are quite right. I mean I'm I'm one of the uh, one of the fans that sort of comes over under the uh, O'Leary Champions League uh, UEFA Cup runs. Um obviously I started supporting them just before we were getting into the UEFA Cup. Like I say it was ninety six, ninety seven my uh, my first uh, my first games at Leeds United um, but like I say I was very lucky to come in just just before that time where we started having some you know relatively decent success um, the first in a while so you know they, they were fantastic times obviously uh, you know seeing such mega European giants play like you know Real Madrid and Barcelona at Ellen Road um, you know really great times there. and obviously as you say you know times like that brings a lot of new fans on board you know it brings a lot of youngsters uh, to the games you know and brings a lot more interest so obviously you know the last few seasons crowds have been dwindling because we've we've been down down in the lower leagues you know a lot of younger fans haven't really had anything to you know inspire them to come to Leeds United so the next thing I mean it's difficult to say what what it is that's going to attract the next generation of of Leeds fans but I think we've got to look now you know McDermott's coming to the club I think he's the perfect man for the job as you know the way he's been speaking as long as the board back him you know this summer and I think he's asked for six or seven players um, and he's given that list uh, to to Sean Harvey and, and Gwyn Williams if he gets the team that he wants I believe next season is going to be a massive massive season if he builds a team that plays fantastic football 
and a team where we're not going to be going up and down the league constantly throughout the season you know we're going to have a consistent side consistent results say we, we're up towards the top of the, the table throughout the whole season we gain promotion at the end of it maybe go up as champions you know that is going to bring so so many young young fans back to Welland Road and, and wanting to watch Leeds United obviously getting up to the Premiership and staying there is a different um, is a different question altogether really but if he can do that and build you know get some building blocks around this whole club you know it's not just about getting straight back into the Premiership it's about building the whole club up again which is needed and I think if that can be done over these next few seasons and there's going to be a lot a lot more new faces seen around Ellen Road. You know, the crowds will start coming back. You know, there'll be different generations of, of Leeds fans coming in, a lot younger ones, uh, you know, maybe coming as as a family. So, you know, in answer to your question, I think, I think these next few years may be that time to see that next generation of Leeds fans coming through because, you know, they, they haven't really been been wanted they haven't had anything to come and see these past few years um, you know nothing been really enticing them to the club you know maybe apart from the the higher profile games you know in the cup uh, you know against like Man United and Arsenal and Tottenham but it needs to be more consistent than that to get those uh, to get those youngsters in so yeah fantastic uh, question there Craig and yeah like I say hopefully these next few uh, few seasons might just be uh, might just be that time to get that next generation of fans in and something that you know we can be talking about in a few years time and putting that up with uh, you know the runs under O'Leary and the championships of 1992 so uh, thank you very much for that question there mate uh, again another one from uh, YouTube this is Matthews LUFC um, there are a lot of good players out of contract this summer which freebies would you like to sign now again brilliant question there you know I think although there's going to be players out there that McDermott is going to be wanting to spend uh, you know quite a bit of money on and hopefully GFH will back him up there uh, we've, we've, we've got to look at the freebies that are going to be out there because like I says there are a lot um, of players that are going to be uh, out of contract and actually if you go to um, the website transfermarket.co.uk it actually lists um, all the players that are out of contract and I think there's about just over 60 from the Premiership and about over 200 from the Championship um, so I've just had a quick look through um, and this is like I said this is just a, a short um, thing of players which personally I'd like to see uh, see at the club that I think would do a, a decent job um, in the Championship next season uh, starting off in defence uh, Matthew Kilgallen is going to be out of contract from Sunderland this summer I'm not usually a massive advocate of going back to old players that have already been at the club but for me personally he was a fantastic young uh, central defender coming through at Leeds United I always really really um, enjoyed watching him play and yes you know he's been getting on a bit and he's not been playing as much football probably as he'd liked but the fact that he's still at a premiership club in Sunderland shows that he's still clearly got some class um, and you see that every now and again when he's been playing this season so you know I think a drop down to the championship I think he's the perfect centre back that uh, we could we could do with um, at the club as a, you know in central defence you know it's a, definitely a, a position that we need to really consolidate and, and have a strong centre half pa uh, partnership and I believe uh, you know Kilgallen could be one of those players uh, Eric Lehi from uh, Aston Villa is meant to be out of contract this summer. He's a player that quite a lot of fans have said that you know, given the chance, they'd want him back, and I definitely wouldn't disagree there. You know, I thought he was fantastic at the club um, uh, at win back. Sylvan, well, going up, going up front now. Sylvan Evan, Evans Blake from Wolves. He's going to be out of contract apparently. Um, obviously, with them going down, it it had been going anyway, really. But I mean, he scored 14 goals for Wolves this season. Uh, you know, not a forward that that fans seem to talk about a lot or that that would want, um, just because of the type of player that he is. But you know, he's a goal scorer, and really, essentially, that that's what we need at the club. You know, we need a really decent goal scorer and someone who's going to create a partnership up front for us at Leeds next season. So you know, I think he would be a decent uh, player to get um, on a free. Matty Phillips from Blackpool, which I'm sure a lot of fans would want at the club. You know, he's he's shown a lot of class, especially this season, along with Tom Ince at Blackpool. So you know, if he was to uh, to stay out of contract, you know, he'd be a fantastic player to get on the free. Kevin Doyle again from Wolves. 
Uh, maybe not so much. Maybe I prefer Blake uh, over him, really. But again, on a free, you can't really go wrong with a player like that. You know, he's he's done it before. He's clearly got the uh, got the skill and got the goals there. Uh, Lewis McGugan from uh, Nottingham Forest, a midfielder there. Again, shows some some fantastic promise and some fa fantastic skill. Uh, a really great midfielder there to get on a free. And also Will Hoskins from Brighton, another forward there. You know he's he's played some uh, some really great stuff. So I mean that's just a taster of some of the uh, some of the players that are out of contract and some that that I would particularly like to see at the club that I think uh, you know would would fit the bill really for for what we're needing next season. You know all those players there, I think I think would be perfect for us. And obviously that with a mixture of more experience, um, you know, a bit more uh, bit more skill to them maybe. Uh, and just a bit more sort of higher class really than them, but you know, t just one or two of them mixed with with the uh, you know big money signings, um, I think will be will be pretty decent really. So thank you very much for your question there, Matthews LUFC. Uh, I'm gonna kind of put two questions into one here. Um, a question from Lee Acton on Twitter: um, How many players do you think we need to make a serious promotion challenge next season? And also Jordan Armour on Twitter. Uh, which players do you want us to sign in the summer? So, in answer to your first question, Lee, personally, I'd say at, at least five, uh, but at least five decent players. You know, not just five, all five freebies or you know, cheaper options. You know, like we've been used to in these past few seasons. But you know, ideally, sort of six or seven, like Brian McDermott has apparently um, asked to to speak to. Um, uh, with with the board, you know, he's apparently he's had a list of six or seven players, and I think that mixed in with uh, you know a few of the players that we've got at the club already would would be perfect. You know, I think the likes, obviously, Sam Byram. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we manage to keep hold of him. You know, I think I think that's a major, that's going to be a major factor into the players that we bring into the club next season. You know, as long as we keep him, you know, we can maybe look at cheaper options, maybe somewhere. Um, but if if he goes and we get some decent money in for him, then you know I think we definitely need uh, well, obviously definitely need another right back and maybe someone someone extra on the wing because obviously there might be the option of pushing pushing him up to right right midfield maybe under McDermott. So yeah, you know a lot rests on him. But obviously we're going to have McCormack in the squad. Hopefully Morrison might step up a bit later, but definitely need another uh, another striker and you know a real proper goal scorer in the club. We definitely need two two wingers, you know, someone who's going to create a lot of opportunities, you know, real pace down the wing, which we haven't had since Gradle left, um, and you know, no real people getting getting crosses into the box, you know, there's been there's been no chances created like that. As I said before, you know, definitely need uh, another centre back, um, well, at least at least another centre back. And um, and some some central midfield players would be nice because our midfield is a real sort of weak point for our for our team at the moment really. So yeah, in answer to your question, Lee, probably about six or seven players. And bringing uh, Jordan's question in, which players of those I would want to sign? I mean, up front, you can't really look past Charlie Austin, can you? From Burnley, you know, tw twenty five goals this season. You know, he, he definitely knows definitely knows where the goal is and, and where to find it, of course. You know he'd be fantastic to have. Whether the, whether he'll be available, whether he'll be affordable, of course. You know that's another thing. But I think he's one of those players where you can really you, you need to just branch out that little bit more and and offering that little bit more cash. Uh, Dwight Gale, the youngster from uh, from Peterborough, of course they've just gone down. So you know it's probably likely he's going to be looking for another club. I think a step up to the Premiership would be a bit too much for him at the moment. So he's probably going to be looking to stay somewhere in the championship. You know, if McDermott can can somehow manage to persuade him to come to Leeds, again, you know, he's shown such promise this season. Um, you know, he had a, a great game against us, um, especially at Ellen Road. And he scored some, some really, really quality goals there for Peterborough. So, you know, he'd, he'd be a fantastic player. A player that, well, a striker that people may not have thought of. Um, whether he'd, he'd, he'd want to leave Charlton or not, I don't know. But he's Jan, Jan Kermigan. Now, he's 31 years old, so people may say he's been getting on a bit. But, saying that, in a, a fairly poor Charlton team this season, he's managed to uh, get eight assists 
um, and also 12 goals which you know is nothing to be really laughed at um, I'm not saying by him you know as, a, as another main striker and, and just as a main goal scorer but you know it might be another option out there you know we've, we've got to be looking at uh, you know not the obvious targets because we, we're not going to get everyone that, that, that we're hoping for of course so you know I think you know 24 goals in 68 appearances at Charlton for him I think you know why not you know it seems a decent enough player um, moving into uh, into midfield I'd love to go in again for Jerome Thomas I mean whether West Brom would be willing to get rid of him obviously we were in uh, talks to buy him after his loan spell at the club and that didn't work out whether it was money reasons or whether West Brom just really didn't want to, to let him go it, who, who knows there but you know, he, he showed a lot just in that small period that he was on loan at the club. You know, he's got that pace. He takes defenders on. He gets the ball, uh, ball it into uh, into the box, and of course, he does score a few goals. And you know, he gets himself in there. You know, I think he'd be uh, be a good player to look at. Also, Robbie Brady um, from Hull, 21 year old, a really promising young uh, young winger there. Again, got a lot of pace. Takes players on. Just perfectly what we want on the wing, really. Um, Chris Burke looks like that's probably a no-go I believe he's just signed a, a, an extension at, uh, at Birmingham so unfortunately that's that's probably not going to happen again as I've already mentioned Matt Phillips on the wing um, I don't really need to say much about him because you know everyone in the championship knows knows how good he is again whether it would be you know bigger supposed bigger teams might be going for him who knows but you know we're just as big as, as a lot of teams in the championship and some in the premiership so whether he's one of the players on the on McDermott's list who knows there Bakary Sacco from Wolves who was pretty much an unknown um, really before before playing for Wolves this season uh, but again he's shown some fantastic skill and, and uh, some really great qualities there a very strong strong midfield uh, got a fantastic shot on him scores plenty of goals so you know, I think he again would be a perfect player to have uh, to have in midfield for us. Um, when looking in defence again, as I already said before, Matthew Kilgallen, I think he'd be be perfect to have. Also, Matt Mills um, is a player that seems to be always mentioned really uh, in defence. Um, you know, he'd uh, be a, a perfect uh, cen centre back really uh, to pair up with either you know Peltier or whoever it might be. Um, of course, there's always Clint Hill that get, gets mentioned. I personally wouldn't really be, be too too pleased with that. You know, he's not a player that really, uh, you know, excites you sort of in central defence. Seen him playing for QPI, you know, a few mistakes here and there. So he's not really someone I'd like to look for. So, again, just a, a couple of names there that, again, I, I really wouldn't mind seeing at the club. And I think they'll be able to do a decent job. So, uh, you know, let me know if you agree with me um, on any of them. So, yeah, that's the end of the uh, Leeds United questions, guys. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, for all those. In hope, uh, hope you enjoyed them. Just two more questions to go. Then, uh, Cal from Rotherham, uh, he asked, "What games will I be playing after the uh, Far Cry 3 Permadeath series?" Well, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Um, obviously, the people who are interested in in the games that I play. Um, I've I've never really had anyone asking asking me to play any certain game, so I thought I would give you some options that I do have. Um, I do have uh, Assassin's Creed Three, the new Assassin's Creed Three game. Um, not as great as I was expecting it to be, really. I do prefer the other ones. Uh, I do have Assassin's Creed uh, Brotherhood and also Assassin's Creed uh, Revelation. So if anyone would prefer me to play those, then I'd be more than happy to. Uh, I recently bought the new WWE uh, 13 game, which is quite a lot of fun to play. So, if you would like that, then you know, get your votes in there. Also, Hitman Absolution, um, Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh, I am also getting the new Grand Theft Auto 5 game, but that's not coming out till September. Uh, but definitely, I'll be doing a, a playthrough on that because that looks absolutely immense. And I also have Mafia 2, which is quite a uh, quite a fun uh, shoot 'em up kind of game with a great story so I'll leave that up to you guys really out of the list that I've done there once I've done the Far Cry 3 permadeath series which I will be recording more of this week guys uh, sorry for the big uh, the big gap between the videos there but again like I said I have been busy uh, but yeah if you want me to play any of those games that I've mentioned there then uh, do let me know and finally 
uh, Kelly92 asks, uh, what do I do when I'm not supporting Leeds United and making vlogs? Well, um, basically at the moment, I've rec the reason I've been so busy lately, um, I've been completing an apprenticeship to uh, basically become a uh, railway track um, engineer. Uh, full title a, a P -way, uh, PTS P way track man uh, so that's been a 14 to 16 week course and uh, thankfully last week I I, uh, I was passed um, so I'm going on to a full year's apprenticeship hopefully with the company at some point soon so you know that's going to be occupying a lot of my time so that's going to be obviously mean I won't be able to do as much on here um, but I'll have to see how the shifts go so you know work wise that's that's what I do in my spare time um, sort of leisurely uh, hobbies and stuff you know I obviously like watching TV and stuff um, really prefer sort of comedy shows a lot of uh, sitcoms and things really you know favourites probably you know Family Guy uh, Big Bang Theory um, Friends you know things like that mainly American stuff uh, but enjoy English films like a uh, really good uh, big fan of, of not going out um, like a lot of uh, panel shows especially the UK ones like Would I Lie to You and QI QI is just I think my favouritest uh, my favouritest TV show ever it's it's just fantastic fun and the amount of pointless stuff that you learn off there is uh, is always great um, really like watching Top Gear so you know that kind of stuff uh, listen to a lot of music um, as some people may know on here you know the, the theme music to this is Less Than Jake uh, they're my, they're my favourite uh, band really ever uh, big fan of uh, Green Day Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Offspring mainly into my, my, my rock um, sort of 70s 80s rock and metal stuff like that but again anything that's good really um, I'm kind of into uh, not a big fan of your sort of your, your rap um, you know your, your drum and bass that kind of thing uh, don't really like much of that and a lot of pop music these days is just absolute shite in my opinion but um, yeah mainly a kind of rock guy um, and apart from that obviously you know people know that I love my sports I, I keep a, a big eye on rugby league a uh, big league rhinos fan and yes again another thing that I do in my spare time uh, voluntary at um, Hunslet Hawks uh, Rugby League who play at the South Leeds Stadium and whenever they're at home I'm the stadium announcer there which is something I really really enjoy uh, I've been doing it just over a year now and uh, it's just really fantastic you know it's something that came up uh, through uh, you know wanting to do journalism originally after uh, leaving university and it was uh, just just something to do in my spare time obviously I've moved on from the journalism now but I've carried on doing that at the Hawks just because it's a really enjoyable thing to do you know over Sunday a couple of hours get to watch some uh, some decent rugby league and it's such a really friendly club um, at Hunslet you know everyone's absolutely uh, so so welcoming um, a really community based club so you know if, if you're ever stuck for anything to do on a Sunday and Hunslet Hawks are playing then uh, you know I'd, I'd really um, suggest going down and uh, watching your local uh, rugby league team because it really is great fun doing that so uh, yes Kelly that's that's what I do um, when I'm not doing these vlogs and uh, supporting Leeds United so yeah that brings the end of the uh, of the Q&A guys uh, I've really enjoyed doing that actually um, Maybe if uh, if people have enjoyed it as much as I have, we could maybe do it, do one every couple of months or something, um, with a few different questions. If if people enjoyed it, then I definitely don't have a problem doing it again. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for uh, for for sending me your questions in. Um, I will be putting your names at uh, at the end of this video. Um, so yes, obviously it's the end of the season now, so there won't be as many uh, Jones's vlogs um, on on Leeds United for obvious reasons. But I will try and uh, try and do ones, you know, as and when I can. If there's any news, uh, you know, transfer wise during the summer and pre-season, I'm going to try start doing some new stuff. Um, I like doing airfix and jigsaw videos. Um, so I'm thinking of doing like sort of time lapse videos of them, maybe you know, just doing something a bit different in the uh, in the off season. So uh, yeah, basically, if there's anything that you guys want me to do, if there's anything you want me to talk about, 
um, any of the games as I said um, they're in that question that you want me to play uh, on the Jonesy Plays videos and you know do let me know guys because this is the whole point of me doing this you know the interaction with with you you know that that's the whole point of me doing this I, I absolutely love it um, so do let me know your thoughts on this um, obviously the questions that I've answered you know uh, uh, send me your comments there let me know things that you'd that you'd like me to do here on the channel and any changes that you'd like me to uh, to make or that you'd like to see um, so yeah thank you very much for sticking with me for uh, for this season guys you know it's been a, an absolute blast um, and it's uh, been bigger and better than, than I was expecting so yeah thank you once again guys and I will be speaking to you very soon as always sorry yep get in contact with me either here on YouTube or on my Twitter at Chris Jones LUSC so yeah thank you very much guys and I will be uh, speaking to you very soon yeah.